Hello everyone, Kelvin here, and this is part one of a very short series where I'll be talking about using the internal effects processor on a mixing console. Now, most modern mixers, um, analog and digital, they now come equipped with internal effects processors and there's a good chance that the one you have already has at least one effects processor built into it and these effects are very good and they are comparable to more expensive outboard effect units and so it's worth giving them a try especially in live sound situations where the quality of the effect isn't much of an issue and so in this video i'll be going through the process of setting up the effects unit on the mixing console and to get effects out of it Although these effects units are built within the console, they however are separate units within the console. And so in order for them, in order for you to get them to work, there has to be a way to send um, audio signals from the channel strip um, to the effects processor and then a way to return the wet signals from the effects processor back to your mixing console. And that is what we'll be doing in this first part of the series. So let's jump right into it. Now, for demonstration, I'm using the Yamaha MG2414FX mixing console. Now, this mixer comes equipped with two effects processors, effects processor 1 and 2. And so, in order to send signals to the effects processor, this mixer has two post-fader auxiliary sends that are um, configured to send audio signals to the effects processors from the channel strips. And they are lab labeled as effects 1 send and effect to send now it's worth mentioning that these effect sends are post fader sends and so the channel fader can also be used to increase or decrease the amount of signal that is sent to the effects processor the mic i'm using i've been plugged to this channel channel 13 of the mixing console and so to be able to send signal from my to be able to send my voice um, to the effects processor let's use effects one I have to turn up effects one here. Let's set this to unity gain, which is the one o'clock position. And then I have to turn up the uh, effect send master um, right over here. And so this is the master knob for effects uh, um, send one. And so let's turn this up to three o'clock position. Okay. Now my voice has been sent to the effects processor using the effects one send. And so for the effects processor one, which is this effects processor here, uh, we have about 16 effects. We have 16 effects program for each of the effects processor. We have a bunch of reverbs, um, delays, um, a pitch change, chorus, phasers, and a couple of others. And so there's a rotary control here, which can be used to select which um, effects program. Now, this is like the basic... Um, kind of effects processor. There is no screen, there's no LCD. Um, you just have knobs and um, rotary controls to be able to do your selection. This is as basic as it can get. And so let's let's try the first um, effect, effect one, which is reverb hall. So let me select it right here. All right, reverb hall. And there's a parameter knob here. This parameter actually knob changes um, a certain variable or parameter in the effects program that is selected and for reverbs um, what the parameter knob does is to change the reverb time um, we'll, we'll get back to that in a couple of uh, um, moments and so we have um, some return knobs to send the effects from the effects processor to uh, these knobs are used to send them to the auxiliary knobs in case you want to send your effects to stage monitors so we have knobs to send the effects to um, auxiliary one two three and four and then to send the effect uh, program a yeah, processor rather the effects return to send it to your stereo master there is there are boss assign switches here that you can use to send it and then a fader to send it to either the stereo master or the group bosses so let's send this to our stereo ma master by engaging the boss assign switch for stereo and then put on the effects uh, processor so when i turn the fader up we should be able to hear um, effect so let's try that try that check one two check one two now we have reverb um the parameter knob let me turn this down for uh let it not be so distracting uh the parameter knob like i said um changes the time of the reverb and for reverb hall when you go all the way to minimum it's uh, about 0 0.3 seconds of um, reverb time and then to maximum gives you about 10 seconds of reverb time i i think that's that's it uh, from the manual that came with the mixer so let's let's check that shorter reverb time 
and longer reverb time. Now, this might be too much for uh, a live sound situation, but this is just to this demonstration is just to um, get the process of configuring the internal effects processor and to get uh, effects um, out of it. Uh, so let's try a bunch of other reverb. This is reverb room. The reverb hall simulates um, a large hall environment why the uh, river broom simulates a smaller room environment and then you might want to use this if your um venue already sounds reverberant already sounds like a large hall um you might use the might want to use the river broom in instead so check one two shorter reverb and then longer river let's try a couple of delays we have delay one at um number eight so Let's try that. Check, 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 check. check. One, two. One, two. Shorter delay time. Shorter, Shorter delay, delay time. time. Longer delay time. Longer delay time. Longer delay time. <laughs> so with, with this basic um, effects processor in um, consoles like this, you only have one parameter um, to adjust in your effects program. So for delay, for example, uh, it just changes the delay time. And some people might want to change um, uh, the feedback gain as well, which is the number of times the delay um, has to repeat itself before it fades away. But for this mixing console, those, um, has been, those variables uh, are already fixed. And so you just have to make use of what you have but if you use them very well they should be um, good and they should work well uh, for you so let's just consider um, a few more uh, pitch change okay check check one two check one two check one two <laughs> this is a very funny effect um chorus Check one, one two. two. Um, the chorus just um, gives you the effect as though uh, you have maybe two people or more talking at the same time. Check, Check one, one two. two. I think it's a it's a form of delay, but a very short one. We have phaser. Check one two. I really don't know what this one does. We have um, radio voice. Check one two, and tremolo. In the next two videos, we'll be considering the two most important effects used in live sound, reverb and delay. You should subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and if you got any form of value from this video, then hit the thumbs up icon. In the meantime, you can click to watch another video. I'm Kelvin, I'll see you in the next one.